Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to Classic Tacos. Today we're doing a little bit of an odd one. We're going to put a Pelican case under the hood. I know that sounds crazy, but just bear with me. Follow through. This is going to be a fun one. So why I'm doing this is there's whole, not a whole lot of space in the Tacoma for anything. And as you can see up on the rack there, I don't always have my kind of larger case with all of my recovery gear. I don't like having it up there all the time like some people do. So let me show you why I want to do this. Let's look at my door here real quick come inside and bam what is all that i'm like oh what's it what do i got here oh super cool that's where i have my lock to everything what's this so you got your hand signing white tea ginger and then you got all this right so i mean if i didn't want to run this i could just have that like that not too bad but i just don't like the way this looks so the goal is to get this um under the hood Let's walk over to the bench. I'll show you what case we're planning to install. So this is the case we're looking at. This is Pelican uh, 1120 case. And I got the Desert 10. Cause you know, the ladies love it when you match. Uh, not a terrible price either. So the goal is to get this mounted on top of the fuse box lid, which should give me enough room for my wiring and my switch and we're gonna get it out of the inside of the cab so let's open up the hood and i'm gonna kind of position it where i kind of want it to go to show you guys what we have to do hood struts this is the let me open that up a little bit so that's the general vicinity where i want it to go still be able to get into your latches and open it not running into any of the hood struts doesn't get in the way of any of your wiring and should not get in the way of the box I mean, it should just be easy enough to remove the fuse box cover and basically just bolt this down on it and we're done. The easiest way to do this is kind of just position it where you want it to go. So what I'm going to do is just kind of mark with some tape the lines that I want this to stay at and then we'll take the fuse cover off, put it on the bench, drill and get everything set up there. So it's a good idea to just position this here where you want it. Um, make sure that you can get to the latches and run your tapes, draw your lines, and then drill everything outside of the engine bay. Okay, so I have this is my index mark on this side. This is as far as I want it to go this way. So the rest is going that way. Uh, we're good to take this off. I already kind of have a lot going on here. So removing this is going to be a little harder for me than you guys. Bit of a tight fit there with all my wiring, but we got it. Let's go head over to the bench. Let's do a pro tip here. You kind of want to make sure before you go through this entire install that what you're trying to install actually works. So we're going to pop this out. I'm going to not nicely throw this in here and just shove it in there because when you're out on the trail, it's probably what's going to happen. Shut this, close it, and I'm like, fits. Awesome. It will stay out of the cab, so now we can continue because we've tested, and we know it should work. Um, I'm guessing that I'm just going to use two uh, kind of old screws I had lying around, nut and bolts. I don't think that we're going to go crazy with like 15 or any grade 8 hardware or anything like that. So I'm just going to remove this guy on the bottom. I'm going to save that one because I do want to use that one. And then, you know, remember the orientation of your fuse box where it says fuse. It says relay and fuse here. It points to the front. And how I want this sitting is about right. Right here. Uh, just like that. Should cover everything. I'm just going to go ahead and mark and mark. I mean, let's go more towards the edge. So we're going to mark it. Oh, that moved. And mark it. Perfect. We get those holes in. So pretty standard drill bit. Should kind of just slice through this with no issues.
just like that. Oh, not bad. We didn't cut actually. So we came out pretty good. We hit one kind of few spot here, but we'll go up this way. And kind of up this way here. I like that. Perfect. Perfect. Definitely have enough room. I don't know how big these are because I had these lying around, but if I had to guess, they're an inch and a quarter. All right. See what we can kind of put here. See if I got any silicone lying around. All right, well, I got plumber's putty, so we're going to throw that in there. You guys really could use anything like a hot glue gun to work. So I don't think there's actually going to, like a huge fear of getting too much water into here, but you know how it goes. Off road. Okay, so here we are left on the bottom. I'm just going to kind of clean up, get as much of that putty off as you can. Really no need to have like it caked everywhere, so. All right, so that's where you're gonna end up with something like this. I've cleaned up all of the putty that I used. So I kind of don't want it just falling into the fuses at all. And then here's what it looks like on the inside. The bolts, they don't really come out that much. You probably get away with one inch. These are, I think, I'm, I'm thinking these are an inch and a quarter. I don't know for sure because I didn't bother measuring them. And I had them here lying around. Oh, just take this bottom piece, make sure it can go back in there. It does. Um, you can cut little slits in it where the nuts are if you would like. I am going to do that. So you'll end up with something that looks just like that. Just like that. Let's go throw it on the truck. Uh, I will say if you have any concerns about how far down the bolts go, you do have some space here and kinda you can use this little fuse holder as a guide. If you're underneath that fuse holder, you should be good. So. All right, so like I said, again, I got a lot going on here with all of my like aftermarket cables and stuff and this uh, Overland Equip box. So it might be a little difficult to get this in here. Um, if you don't have all this going on, it shouldn't be too bad. Your cables shouldn't stick out so much like mine do. So we're going to try to just finagle and uh, gently massage. And that wasn't terrible. That was a lot better than I thought it was going to go. And just like that, we are locked in. I have room here to open everything up and close everything up. Um, I would have liked it a tiny little bit further back, but clearance is good here. I have room. I'm not the gentlest thing in the world. Um, I have room here um, for this guy and this guy. Um, let's, uh, awesome. I, I think, I think with just two bolts, you're good. I don't think you gotta go crazy and have like four bolts and waterproof everything. I think, I think this is fine. So now we know it fits. You can see what it looks like installed. My hand sanity now is all alone and doesn't have to worry about these guys messing with her. Here's an idea of what it looks like inside of the hood. Um, no clearance issues for me, even though I have the hood struts. And there you go. Installs pretty sweet and done. I would say even if you don't um, have a winch, it might be a good idea for you if you have stuff you want to keep under here. So, like, I know it'd be a good idea, like, in the future, I will have an ARB um, compressor installed. So, you can have one of these in here to kind of hold your compressor type stuff. So, awesome. Uh, not too bad. Install was fairly easy. You can always just shove this stuff in the door. Uh, I just like this. This is a lot cleaner. So I hope you enjoy. Hope you're having a good one. Stay safe out there.